Hello everybody, my name is Python and welcome back to another episode here of Calamity Death Mode. Thank you as always for all of your lovely support throughout this series, my friends. I very much do appreciate it. Now, of course, if you want to continue supporting the series, the easiest and best way to do so is simply to drop a like. But of course, if you want to go one further with your support, go ahead and use code Python when ordering any sneak energy drinks or to get 5% off any of my Apex gaming PCs. So today, my friends, we move on to the Aquatic Scourge boss. We require the seafood item, which believe it or not, requires all of the stuff you see in my inventory here. 10 starfish, 20 sulfur sand, 5 shark fins. And check it out. We can make it right now. There it is. It's non-consumable as well, of course, which is beautiful. So we now have infinite attempts to take on and hopefully defeat the Aquatic Scourge boss. Now then, in addition to that, a lot of you guys were saying that you can go ahead and make all of the various accessories needed for the Ankh Charm and therefore Ankh Shield, right? So let's go ahead and uh, check this out, shall we? So let's start off with the blindfold, Souls of Night and Silk. Ah, maybe you guys are onto something here. Maybe we can make ourselves the Ankh Shield before we go ahead and try to take on the Aquatic Skirt. I mean, we've got plenty of souls going on here, my friendos. I mean, why wouldn't I go ahead and give this thing a go at the very least? I think what we should do, though, is we should go ahead and take inventory of what accessories we currently do have. All right, my friends, turns out we already have three out of nine of the accessories required for the Ankh Charm here. So let's go ahead and go through one by one one and see what we can make it so we need bones and ancient bone dust all of which i actually already have so there's the bones of course and the ancient bone dust is actually right there so mithril anvil we now have this bad boy and what that means is we can now make the armor polish yeah <laughs> coming up next are the vitamins we need bottled water water leaf blink root day bloom and three beetle juice believe it or not i'm pretty sure we already have all of that stuff. In fact, I'm pretty sure we've got exactly enough beetle juice. Yeah, look at that. Hey, hey, hey! Okay, so there are the vitamins. All right, we're over halfway towards the Ankh Shield now, guys. Coming up next is the Bazaar. This is actually pretty easily obtainable, but apparently I didn't actually have it already. Either that or I used it in the recipe for some other accessory, which is entirely possible, I guess. But anyway, here we are. 15 stingers, one murky paste. Grants you the ability to make a Bazaar. Coming up next is the Trifold map, ladies and gentlemen. And this one requires silk and Three souls of light and night. The good news is, of course, we've got plenty of all of that. So there we have it, my friends. The trifold map. Beautiful. All right, two more accessories needed, and we should just about have this in the bag. The counter curse mantra requiring the megaphone and Nazar. Let's go ahead and see if we can't make both of these bad boys as well. We only need some wire, cobalt bars, and rubies. All right, here we are. There's the megaphone, and that just leaves the Nazar. Ah, let's go ahead and see how to make this bad boy, huh? 15 souls of night and three lenses. Hey, that's actually pretty easy. There we have it, the Nazar. Ladies and gentlemen, we now have every single accessory required to make ourselves the Ankh Shield, and I'm pretty excited for this. I really am very grateful for you guys going ahead and uh, turning my attention to this, because who knows, maybe the Ankh Shield is the difference between us living and us dying in whatever boss fight we may wind up finding ourselves in. You know? So then, here we are. The counter curse mantra, the plan, the medicated bandage, the armor bracing. There's the Ankh charm. There's the obsidian shield. There is the Ankh shield. Yeah, baby. All right. Well, since this is a defensive accessory, there is only one prefix that I am going to be looking for on this. And that, of course, is warding. So we are going for warding or bust on this bad boy. Let's keep on going until we get it. It shouldn't be too long. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Come on. There it is. All right. So we've got plus six defense. A grand total of 18 defense in one accessory. Wow! Turns out the Ankh Shield is in fact a material. It's a material for Asgard's Valor here. 16 defense remains a material. Grants immunity to knockback and most debuffs. Plus 16 defense while submerged in liquid. Plus 20 life. Grants a holy dash which can be used to ram enemies. And well, check it out. There's a lot of things needed for it. Ornate Shield. Shielding the Ocean. We've actually already got that. Uh, Abaddon. The Core of Calamity. And five life roots. Ooh, that's going to take a fair while to make isn't it? Cause of Calamity have gotten very much later down the line, aren't they? 
Yeah, look at this. Ashes of Calamity, Cause of Chaos, Ilium, and Sunlight. Well, as with other things in this series, do go ahead and remind me when I am actually able to upgrade this thing. I know I can't for now, of course, but yeah, do remind me. So I'll be going ahead and debating internally which of the accessories I should take off in favor of the Ankh Shield, and it's kind of been whittled down to two. We've got the Bloody Worm Scarf here, which is 10% increased damage reduction and increased melee stats, or the Amalgamated Brain, which has 10% increased damage, shade rains down when you are here, and confusing enemies nearby when you are struck. Ah, uh, I don't know, man. We could also take off the Grand Gelatin if we really wanted to, but I do rather appreciate the very, very slightly higher amount of life that it gives. So, I think the Bloody Worm Scuff might just be the thing. So, we are going from 68 defense all the way up to 80, would you believe? Holy guacamole! So again, as per everything else, do remind me when I'm actually able to, you know, upgrade this thing. Oh, wow, Cosmolite bars. They're gotten from the Devourer of God. So, uh, yeah, very much later down the line, eh? <laughs> so then, the Aquatic Scourge. Since this is a worm-type boss, I was kind of thinking that maybe just having a very, very large platform over at the Sulfura Sea might just be enough to have this boss taken down pretty easy like. So yeah, we are simply going to add a whole bunch of platforms above the Sulfura Sea here and uh, we'll basically just see how it goes, I guess. So, let's make a bit of a start, shall we? We'll get ourselves some platforms, we'll get ourselves some arena buffs and various other bits and bobs and we will get this thing going. So, at the arena shop, we have a lot of things here, my friendos. The ammo box isn't really needed. The bewitching table though yes i will take that increased armor penetration but only for melee weapons well we're not going to be using melee weapons so we're going to go ahead and leave that we'll take some peace candles because i thought that would be a good idea we'll take ourselves a couple of uh, heart lanterns here as well and of course campfires for a little bit more life regen. Ah, yeah. We get to work with this amazing music that's playing here. I love the Sulfurous Sea music. I truly do. I think it's fantastic. All right. Well, let's go and get these platforms up. And let's give the Aquatic Scourge a go. Alrighty, guys. So, as you can see, we've got these little buff stations, regen stations, whatever you want to call them. Sort of spread all across here. We now have two platforms going on, which is beautiful. And what I'm hoping is that this is going to be enough for us to take on and defeat the Aquatic Scourge. So, we are going to use the Frostbite Blaster, basically all of these ranged weapons here, and if these don't wind up working out, then we'll just have to maybe use a little bit of something else, you know? So then, needless to say, we need to grab ourselves some buff potions or combo pop, whatever floats our boat, and we are going to get on with this thing, my friendo. So, we have ourselves the tank combination, the ranger combination. Yep, those two will be very, very nice together. And the question is, where is the brewer? Do we even have a brewer? Uh, oh, okay. She apparently died and she hasn't respawned back in because apparently there's no space for her. Well, that sucks. Turns out we might need to make ourselves some new NPC hotels, guys. So then, ladies and gentlemen, the Aquatic Scourge. Let's buff on up here. And here we have it. The Aquatic Scourge has awoken. He's coming from the right here. Hey, buddy. 147,200 health. Sweet Lord. That is uh, a fair amount of health, it has to be said. Okay, so far, so good. Seems to be spewing out a freaking ridiculous ton of projectiles. But you know what? So far, so good, guys. So far, so good. We are actually almost at the point of getting adrenaline here already. Uh, that's pretty large, I would say. Oh, we lost it just as we got it. Really? Ah, oh, had to go like that, did it? Hey, oh god, wait, 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 don't you dare, no, oh, okay, come on, buddy, come on, let's try to keep on shooting here in the rough direction of the aquatic scourge, buddy, where you at, buddy, you seem to be taking an age to come over, here we are, hey, Budski, come on, let's keep you going, keep our dodging game up, shall we, hey, we seem to be doing a good amount of damage output here, and again, we're actually getting kind of close to being able to have ourselves a bit of adrenaline here. All right, this time I need to be, like, on it. Come on. All right, go for it! -na 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 yeah! Nice. 
That did a good amount of damage there, ladies and gentlemen. I'm pretty happy about that one. Pretty dang happy. All right, he has got some new attacks going on now with a whole bunch of what appears to be little poison clouds. Ugh, yikes. Ah! Okay, get out of here, son. All right, there we are. A little bit of health for you, boy. Love to see it. Come on. We need to make the most out of this rage buff here. Yeah. 46,000 health is now the amount we are down to here, my friendos. We are really not doing too bad. Oh, there she is. All right. Okay. Keep an eye on those poison clouds. All is looking well, guys. Yeah. We're doing way better than I thought we would. <laughs> Would you believe we've got the adrenaline back as well? Come on! Make the most out of the point blank there, bud! Yeah! That's the second time we've had adrenaline in this single fight here. All right. Come on. Keep her going. 12,000 health. Oh, dude. This has actually been an absolute cakewalk. Am I just, like, super powerful now or something? Because I really do feel like... I haven't been having a great deal of issues with the bosses here. <laughs> oh, okay, still got to be careful, though. Still got to be careful. All right, there he is. Hey. Hey. Oh, it's dead. So long, Aquatic Scourge. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, it got wrecked, guys. It got wrecked. A toxic downpour falls over the wasteland seas. We are immediately into another acid rain event and believe it or not this is actually something we need to be doing next acid rain for the post aquatic scourge oh snap all right guys let's go ahead and get this thing underway shall we we have definitely got ourselves some new enemies here we have to be careful huh oh yeah also this has got my favorite music in the entire calamity mod so far the acid rain music so i I'm going to buff up the music here, and uh, I'm going to enjoy myself. We're just going to go ahead and kill the ever-living poop out of all of these guys. It has to be said, guys, I really do enjoy the mithril armor damage buff. Every now and again, I see a little bit of a mithril pulse just sort of circling their butts, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty satisfying, guys. It's pretty satisfying. It's almost like... Spectre armor, you know, the offensive spectre armor. A lot of the times when I hit an enemy, there's a little pulse that goes out and goes ahead and homes in on another enemy. It's pretty satisfying. Ah, interesting. I'm starting to notice some new drops here. A lead core corroded fossils. All of this stuff is new. The sulfuric scales, they are as before, but yeah, we're starting to get some new drops here. I wonder if there's like a proper boss to be had inside of this event here. Whether there's like a mini boss or something. You know how you get like Mothron with the solar eclipse, for example. That's kind of like a mini boss, isn't it? Maybe there's something similar for this. Hey, ranged weapon proficiency level up. Hey, it feels like it's getting rarer and rarer for me to see those bad boys. I assume there's more XP needed for each level as you progress. But uh, yeah, it's nice to see that every now and again, that we're still progressing. Oh, something else we're getting plenty of out of this event is actually pirate maps. We have three of them now. And bear in mind, they are all non-consumable as well. So um, yeah, we have quite the surplus of those bad boys. <laughs> hey, and there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. The event has cleared. Yeah. All right, well, uh, yeah, that was actually pretty uneventful to be honest with you but what is eventful is all of the drops we managed to get of which we got loads my friends loads and loads of drops indeed however we do still have some other stuff to check out from the boss that we just took down as well the aquatic scourge so give me a minute there were some drops that fell into the ocean here so i'm gonna have to sort of tank it and try to see what there is uh but aside from that yeah everything's looking good man all right wait another meteorite has landed what the devil i wonder where that landed Huh. Absolutely no idea, my friends. No idea whatsoever. All right, let's go ahead and start checking out some stuff here. Starting off with the Aquatic Scourge lore. A horror born of pollution and insatiable hunger. Based on size alone, this was merely a juvenile. These Scourge creatures are the largest aquatic predators and very rarely do they frequent such shallow waters. Oh, snappers. And then, of course, we've got the Sulphur Sea. I remember the serene waves and clear breeze. The bitterness of my youth 
has long since subsided, but it is far too late. I must never repeat a mistake like this again. All right, my friends, let's check out the drops that we got from the Acid Rain event. We've got the Lead Core, which grants immunity to the Irradiated debuff. I'm pretty interested to see what that's a material for. The Dawn Light Spirit Origin. Oh, my. That's, um... <laughs> That's very, 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 very much later in the game indeed. Corroded Fossil. Let's go and check this out here. We've got the Miasma here. The Bone Breaker. Corroded Caustibo. Interesting. Acidic Rain Barrel. And the Music Box for the Acidic Downpour. I wonder if this is the one that I wanted. Ruinous Soul. Aw, oh, man. All this for a Music Box. All right. We've got the Sulfurous Grabber. 130 melee damage. Occasionally releases a ring of colored bubbles. The yo-yo powers up after touching a green bubble. A very agile yo-yo. Sweet. The Acid Lamp. Summons a Sulfurous Skater Nymph. It is from the Calamity Vanities mod. Except it doesn't seem to move? Question mark? Huh. Oh, no, there it is. Ah, that's kind of strange, actually. It doesn't seem to move all that much. Uh, buddy? Oh, there he is. Wow, you have to get way out of range. Do you know what? I'm keeping the cool shades. All right, what else have we got? The Skyfin Bombers coming in at 70 rogue damage, 33% crit chance. Fishy Bombers inbound launches a Skyfin nuke that homes in on enemies below it. Stealth strikes rapidly home in regardless of enemy position. The Orthokira shell? The or Orthosira? Orthosira shell? I have no idea how to pronounce that. 82 summon damage summons a flying Orthosira sentry at the mouse position. It's a sentry. Interesting. Sulfuric treasure. Oh, wow. Glow sticks and healing potions. How great. Oh, come on, man. No, 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 and no again. Now is not the time. No. No, no, and no again. Cancel event. Screw you, man. I will take on the solar eclipse when I am ready. I'm trying to check out the epicness I've got here, and Terraria literally is throwing every event possible at me. It threw the acid rain at me immediately after the aquatic scourge and then tried to throw the freaking solar eclipse at me. No. Okay. No, I will take on the solar eclipse when I am ready. All right, well, let's go and see what we can get on this here yo-yo. We are looking for basically good stuff, godly. Uh, can you even get legendary on yo-yos? Is that... I don't think that's a thing. Huh. All right, so there we are. Godly will do the job very nicely. These Skyfin bombers, let's just keep on going until we get... I think it's what... Flawless? Yep, there we are. 81 rogue damage. And this bad boy, we can get all manner of things, can't we? Uh, ruthless? Uh, yeah, sure. 97 summon damage. Oh, wow, look at this dude, man. It really is a sentry, isn't it? That's cool. After opening up the Aquatic Scourge treasure bag, we've got ourselves a few things here. We have ourselves the Moist Locket. Let's go ahead and check it out. Oh, oh, look at him. Oh, you're kind of cool. I really like the cool shades, though, because the little cryogen actually does have cool shades on. We've got the Submarine Shocker coming in at 95 melee damage. Enemies release electric sparks on hit. We have the Aquatic Emblem. Most ocean enemies become friendly and provides water breathing. Huh. That's kind of cool. Moderately reduces breath loss in the abyss. Provides a small amount of light in the abyss. Okay, very, very nice. And we've got ourselves the bleached angling kit. Has a chance to contain various fishing gear. Um, yeah, sure. We don't really need it, though. But it's appreciated. Alrighty, I won't lie. Out of all of these weapons here, I think the Bone Breaker and the Corroded Corstibo might be the way to go. 150 Bone Javelin required. Bone Javelin. That is not something I've made in a while, but I do remember those bad boys being absolutely disgusting. So we need, what, sturdy fossils, don't we? So if I was to go ahead and get some desert fossils, maybe I could just buy the sturdy fossils? Ah, yes, you can buy sturdy fossils. Nice. All right, we need only 10 of them. We pop on up here. We make ourselves all of the bone javelins. And uh, believe it or not, that should be it. There it is, the bone breaker. Oh, it's legendary off the rip. <laughs> 102 melee damage fires javelins that stick to enemies before bursting into shrapnel. Woo! Sounds pretty nice, doesn't it? Remains a material for... What is this? The Scourge of the Cosmos. Whoa! 712 melee damage. Okay, um, yeah, 
That's that's very much later down the line, huh? <laughs> the shell shooter and toxy bow are required. I am pretty darn sure we've got both of those things, right? There's the shell shooter. Uh, toxy bow? Apparently, we don't have the toxy bow. How does one make a toxy bow? Acid wood and sulfuric scales. There it is. Toxy bow obtained and the corroded corster bow obtained as well. Needless to say, we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves a little bit of unreal on here because, well, that would be rather unreal. <laughs> Look at that. 161 ranged damage. That is way, way the heck higher than all of our ranged weapons here at the moment. 161. Converts wooden arrows into slow, powerful shells that trail an irradiated aura. Uh... Okay. Alrighty, my friends. Well, I think that is actually going to wrap it up for today's episode. The legendary bone breaker. I'm pretty excited to try out these new weapons against whatever it is we may go for next. Wow. That is a hell of a cool effect. Look at that, man. That's really cool, in fact. For any of you guys worried, please don't be. We can simply summon in another solar eclipse at any point. So, yeah, not to worry about that. We didn't just skip an event and we have to wait a whole bunch of time. We could just go ahead and summon it again. So, yeah, maybe next episode we could go and do that, but... Then again, wait, what? That's not quite right. We didn't finish the whole event. So, strictly speaking, that shouldn't be ticked, as far as I'm concerned, anyway. Uh-huh. All right, well, uh, yeah, in a future episode, maybe when it actually comes to proper progression order, we will go ahead and take on the Solar Eclipse. Maybe we can see what we get from the tier of Solar Eclipse we can have now. Because I'm pretty sure it's, what, lowest tier with only one mech boss taken out? You get sort of middle tier when all of the mech bosses are taken out, right? And then you get the full bore pedal to the metal Solar Eclipse when you've taken out either Gollum or Plantera, as far as I can remember. So, um, yeah. We've got lots of things to be done, my friends. We really, really do. But, uh, yeah, guys, it is time to wrap up the episode. Thank you guys very much for watching. If you guys have enjoyed this nice, action-packed, very much weapons-heavy episode, then please do be sure to drop a like. I very much appreciate it. Be sure to hit the subscribe button with those bell notifications turned on if you don't want to miss out on my future content. But for now, my friends, thanks for watching. Have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.